Everybody. I'm Noreen Savage and this is Starting Out Bright. I am so glad to be here with you and you are in for a treat as we meet Rachel Mullins tonight. So just before we get to meet Rachel, I'll tell you a little bit about myself because you probably came here to talk to Rachel and not me and we might not have met yet. So I am, I am here um, after learning about Bright Line Eating with my friend Lori in 2019, she posted on her private Facebook page that she had lost 57 pounds. And if anybody was interested, they could just contact her and she would give you the scoop. So I, my little fingers went flying over to Messenger as fast as they could. And Lori proceeded to tell me that with Bright Line Eating, it was a book written by Dr. Susan Pierce Thompson, there were four bright lines that you did not cross. No sugar, no flour, three meals a day, weighed in measured portions. And when Lori told me that, my heart sunk. I thought there is absolutely no way I could do that. But I really like Lori, and we got together for lunch, and she explained to me um, just more about the program. And I let that sit for two months, and I discovered really where I was. I was in a lot of pain. At five foot two and 270 pounds, my feet were so swollen for like a year. Before that, I was in really good health. But for the past year leading up to it, I had really swollen feet. I had horrendous pain in my knee, bad back, and um, the snoring and sleep apnea was really disruptive. Um, there were many nights I went to bed and really wondered, and my husband did too, wondered if I'd wake up in the morning. And so that's where I was at. And I, I just decided to do it. And I went back to Lori and she said two things, get the book and get into the community, which at that time was We Eat Bright With Lines. That was the only group that I knew of. And I got in the group and I just watched everybody. Like here were these success stories and people willing to share not just the success, but the struggles. And sitting in the background like that, my hope started to grow that I possibly could do this. And so July 1st, 2019, I began to practice without even my husband knowing for three weeks, just staying off of sugar and flour. 
And I was terrible for three weeks, saying goodbye to foods that I really loved. But then I was all in, and I told myself that if I made it one year, I would do what my friend Lori did. I would post on my Facebook page and help anybody I could. Well, I'm a Christian. When that year came up, I was getting ready to post, and I felt God said to me, Noreen, you can do more than that. You could connect people. It was the time of COVID now, and everybody was getting on Zooms, and I could connect all these people who were so inspiring to me to those who were just looking for a little bit of help and a little bit of hope. And so that's how the Zooms were born. And I've been so blessed and encouraged by those who have been taking one for the team, stepping up and coming on and telling their story. And here is Rachel. Rachel, I saw on the Brightline Eating Official group, which I was going to say, there are now many groups starting out Bright as a private group, but the official group is a public group. And Rachel, uh, I think it was in October, she was celebrating two years of doing BLE. There was a picture of you with your husband. And the thing that inspired me in that moment when I saw your, your picture and you know your talk was not that you were saying, hey, look at me. Now, there was this humble, there was this humbleness that just said, I may not be where I thought I'd be or wanted to be, but I'm way, you know, I'm way better than where I was and grateful for every minute, something like that. Yeah. So I like now got my hot little fingers over to the keyboard to come and ask you. So Rachel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. And, the, you know, we talked a, couple, a little bit um, a few days ago just to get to know each other, because here you, you know, you said, yes, you don't even know me from Adam, but um, <laughs> which that's really taken one for the team. And, um, you know, we talked, um, I, I told you kind of my entrance, but if you could just kind of bring us up to speed about what brought you into Bright Line Eating. Sure. Well, I for a very long time, I was one of those people that did the dance with all of the different types of diets out there. I think I really started to be more insecure and aware of my weight when I was in college, like starting out right in college. And so I tried pretty much everything I could imagine and nothing worked. And I just kind of kept gaining weight and I met my husband and we got married and I kept gaining weight and I had kids and I kept gaining weight. And um, I kind of got to a point where, you know, like kind of like you said, like the last year before I found Brightline Eating, like my, my health wasn't so great. My job was extremely stressful and I was using um, not the best ways to cope. I was using food as a coping mechanism and it was just everything was kind of going downhill. And then I got a pretty bad concussion at work and everything kind of compounded. And I got to a point where I was like, something has to give. And I would rather it not be me that gives, <laughs> you know? So um, my sister-in-law actually had started out with bright line eating and she had had a lot of really great success. And I was like, you know, one more diet to try one more, you know, thing to fail at or, you know, whatever. And so I decided like, literally, what do you have to lose? Like mm -hmm. I've tried everything else. I'm kind of at my breaking point. And so I decided just to try and see what happened. And here I am like two years later, I'm still at it and still, still trying. <laughs> exactly. And so just kind of going back to the concussion, yeah, you know, I wouldn't, and, and we talked about this, I wouldn't put the mm -hmm. two together that that would have anything to do with eating. You know, I, right. I would think almost the opposite, like maybe you're in pain and I don't right. want to eat, but I don't know. Tell us what, what that really entailed. So I have, um, I worked at a job. I'm a special education teacher. <clears throat> and so the the school that I worked at and the classroom that I had was for students that have a severe behavior and um, 
anxiety, not anxiety, but emotional disabilities. And so um, I was locking a door one time and a student ran through the door and the metal door hit me like right in the head. And because of that, I had a pretty, pretty bad concussion and I still really haven't bounced back a hundred percent from it. But because of that, um, while my brain was trying to assimilate what happened and heal, I started getting all of these panic attacks and anxiety. And I didn't know at the time that it was a symptom of a concussion. And so I thought I was convinced that I was having a heart attack one night oh. um, because I was so big. Like I was convinced, like I have eaten myself into a heart attack. And so I went to the emergency room and they hooked me up to all the different machines and checked me out. And they were like, You're, it's just panic. Like you just had an anxiety attack. And, you know, this is, un it's not unusual to have that symptom where it kind of manifests as like chest pain or, you know, back pain that might, you might think that you're having a heart attack, but that was kind of my, oh my gosh, come to Jesus moment where I was like, I'm, I need to do something like this is an emergency at this point, because if I continue having these and I continue to, you know, have all these symptoms, like what's going to happen long-term, you know, if I don't get healthy. Yeah. And all this time, you're probably still working in the classroom, yeah. still trying to keep going. Yeah. So you, you get with your sister-in-law. Mm -hmm. Did you do a boot camp or anything like that? I didn't. I had the PDF file of Brightline Eating and it just said, here's the plan, like what you're supposed to weigh. And these are some of the foods you're supposed to eat. And I had that in my hot little hands and that was all I had. And so I kind of was like, all right, what do I do now? So I, you know, spoke with her about some ideas that she eats, but I jumped on Instagram actually. And I found a whole community on Instagram of people who share their food and share their stories on Instagram too. And that's kind of how I taught myself about Brightline eating and saw different food options and ideas of things that I could kind of play with and what I might like. And that's kind of really how I started. <clears throat> So your community, you did get into community, just not only just with Lori, right, your, your sister-in-law, but now you're in this community of Instagram and you're, you're really tackling this from the food angle. Yeah, if I didn't have read at the, the time. Yet. No, I hadn't read the book. Um, I knew there was a book, but I hadn't read it yet. So I kind of just jumped in that way and found like, oh my goodness, like this this from the food perspective, like I'm full, I'm not like craving things, this really works. And I kind of like for the first month, I didn't really think I could do it. And so I had like a breakfast that was a breakfast bar and then lunch and dinner, I had bright meals and I got through a month of it. And I was like, what am I doing? Like, that's, I can do this if I'm having a bar, which is probably less food than what I would normally have on a bright meal. I'm pretty sure I can just make the change and do all of my bright meals. And so that's what I did. And in reality, if you talk to me or a lot of people I know, they would say the opposite. That is the breakfast that's the easier. Right. <laughs> and then the hardest part is maybe dinner and beyond. So you were, you were tackling it from the lunch and dinner first. Yeah. Being in this bar, but then you, you start getting bright. I mean, you're, you're losing weight because I yeah. creeped up on you on your Facebook page. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I was like, what, 80 pounds or something the first year? Yeah. Well, no, not the first year. I, well, let's see. Yeah. I'd say maybe about eight, just about 80 pounds, maybe give or take. Um, I think one thing that is, it sounds really weird, but COVID for me was kind of actually a blessing in disguise because I had just started Brightline eating and then everything shut down. And it was like the one thing in my life I could control was my food. Right. And so it was kind of a saving grace for me at that point. Like I had been bright and I was able to continue to be bright all while we had to be at home. And it was one of those things that I was like, oh my gosh, like I didn't have to worry about the COVID 30 or COVID, however many pounds it is that people are saying that they've gained by staying home it kind of hit me right at the time where I was all in and I was able to just kind of make really good habits during that time. 
And so at that point, you were still just doing it from the PDF. Yeah. How the long PDF, did that go before you got the book? Because you did say um, at some point I, you did read it. I did. Yeah, I actually read the book during COVID. <clears throat> and I'm, I want to say maybe last summer, I think, or yeah, summer of 2020, I think is when I read it because I didn't have school and I didn't have to do, you know, lesson planning and all those fun things. And so I had some time on my hands. And so I read the book then and I was like, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. I should have read this a long time ago. And then all of the, those brain pieces kind of, you know, fell into place. And I really understood like why, why the eating works and why the, the portions work and all of those things. And was kind of my aha, like, well, man, you know, maybe I should have done this earlier. But, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And yeah. um, is there any piece of the science that really spoke to you? There is one of the things that um, really spoke to me as a teacher is the willpower gap that she talks about how your brain can only handle so many choices a day. So by taking food out of that equation of choices that you have to make, you like free your brain up for so many other things. And so not only did it speak to me like in healing from the concussion about freeing my brain up for things, but as a teacher, like, and especially in special education, I was making decisions like left and right all day long. And so I'd get home at times and still, at times when I get home, I'll tell my husband, I really don't want to make another decision, like as long as I live. <laughs> but, wow. you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things, the willpower gap, when I read it, I was like, Oh, my gosh, I never knew there was a name for this. Like, there's a name for I can't make any more decisions right now. And that's, that's what it was. So when you, when you put this all together, you've now mm -hmm. started, you've started the food plan, you're doing well, you get the book. Now you mm -hmm. understand the, and you're a psychology major. You told me that. So that's yeah. probably even really speaking to you even yeah. more so than many. You've put this together. What mm -hmm. was your, what were those pieces that you put in place? I know you had a stack of habits yeah. that you were doing, but what yeah. were specifically that you didn't have to worry about what decision you had to make? So one of the things I found just invaluable for me um, during the week was if I food prepped and meal prepped on Sundays. So on Sundays, I would make my meals, specifically my lunches and dinners for the week, because those were what I ate at work. So <clears throat> I would make those and I would put them in my containers and stack them up in my refrigerator. That way the next morning I could just grab them and go. And I wouldn't even have to think about what I was going to eat because it was already taken care of for me. So what I do is I have the, all these stacks of different things in my refrigerator. And then the night before kind of as my habit stack at the end of dinner is I put food away and I grab out what my portion will be for breakfast and lunch. And I arrange it like right in front. So when um, the morning comes and it's busy and I'm getting the kids ready to go and myself ready to go and stuff, I just grab it and put it in my lunch and I'm out the door, my lunch bag. So I don't really have to sit there and think or make a decision, you know, about what food I'm going to eat at that point. And I kind of do that for dinners as well. I shared with you um, a couple of days ago that I meal plan for dinners, like for two weeks in advance, kind of when I go shopping. So I have a menu of what's going to be for dinner, but I don't prep it ahead of time. I just have it ready to go. You have all the food. Mm -hmm. You have you may have some of it. Um, you, you don't prep any of it for dinner. But I, you I have don't it ready to go and you know exactly what you're going to make. Yeah, I know exactly what I'm going to make. I have it all written down on a calendar. And so usually part of my um, habit stack of closing the kitchen for the night is I look at the calendar for what's going to be on our meal tomorrow. And I pull out if it's um, you know, something that's frozen, like meat wise, I'll pull it out to defrost and I'll kind of get that all ready to go and make sure we have all the ingredients. And that way, when I get home, I don't also have to think about, okay, what are we going to eat for dinner? And sometimes the meals might change or like I might get home late or the 
boys are especially hungry or something and I might switch days if it's feasible, but it's always what's on there. So for me, it works and it kind of keeps me accountable that way at dinner time. I'm curious just right now, your boys are young. They must be, you're young. Do they know any about this? Like, do they know like mom's got this organized or dad helps or whatever? Or dad? Oh, they, yeah, they do. They, um, they'll say like, when I first started losing weight, they would say, Oh, mom's on a diet. And I'd be like, no, this is how I'm choosing to eat. And so my, the boys are nine and six. Um, and my younger one will be like, why do you eat so many vegetables? Cause you know, he doesn't really like them at this point. And I'll tell him like, well, they're good for me. And then we kind of involve that conversation at dinner, like what kinds of things um, the vegetables have in them that are good for our bodies. And we'll talk about it. And then the other day, I think in one of the the pictures on um, the screen, my younger one was like, why do you weigh that stuff? And I said, so I know exactly how much I need so I can eat it. And he was like, huh, can I weigh mine? And I was like, sure, absolutely. So he put his, not my food on there and weighed out some pasta sauce on it. And he was good to go. And I was like, sure, whatever, dude, that works for me. You know, I've so always they, wondered what, what effect that's going to have, because we're like first generation in this. Right. And I, and I really wonder, because I know that weighing food for myself personally, mm-hmm. this brings me so much peace. Yeah, for me even, too. Even like in my husband would say in the beginning, like, really, you really need to do that? And I'm like, yeah, yeah I kind of do. It's like, it just feels so good that and there's I know some, exactly what yeah. I'm supposed to have. As and there's something about knowing. Would say, I know the code. Yeah. I know the code. And what's interesting is like your son is already learning this is now a way of life. It's not a diet. Yeah. This is how I choose to eat. And my husband um, usually eats what the boys have, but occasionally he'll throw in whatever else it is that I'm cooking. Like if I substitute a vegetable for whatever grain that is that they're having, he'll eat that as well. And so they see him eating those things and trying those things. And my oldest um, actually helps me like saute my vegetables when I'm cooking and he'll like try them, you know, and be like, Oh, that actually tastes good. I'm like, yeah, it does. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> it's real food. Yeah. I, I've got to ask this question because for all the teacher friends out there, yeah, what do you bring to work as a teacher? That's gotta be a crazy shift. And yeah, it can I mean, be. It speaks to you, but I know of other people who have shifts that are kind of hard too. Right. In the medical profession, even my daughter who is does serving mm-hmm. and she can't, you know, get off and eat. <laughs> so right. what what do you do? What do you bring? Um I have a variety of things that I like to eat in the mornings and I just am tr- I try to be cognizant of what what is really filling for me. So there might be breakfast that I have that um, just burn off really fast. And I try to notice those ones and maybe put those ones to where I'm going to be home and not working all the time. So I try to have like some denser breakfasts, like rice and beans and cheese or something that's going to last me a while. Um, Especially when I was at my old job, because we would take students off campus frequently and we might go hiking or we might do like a bunch of different activities that are pretty strenuous. And so I just have all my stuff. And sometimes I would take my little bag with me and I would have it with me in the van and hiking. I would eat my food and sometimes it'd be cold. And sometimes I'd get back and I'd be able to warm it up. And I kind of just knew I had enough food and I wouldn't have to worry about not having it there at some point in time, I was going to be able to eat it. And that's kind of like for teachers, a lot of times some, some teachers have like that little block of time for lunch. Um, I wasn't ever at a place where I had a lunch. I just ate lunch with the students because our students were in a self-contained classroom. So a lot of times it was so funny. My students would tease me all the time. They'd give me such a hard time about what I was eating, but um, then they'd be like, oh, that looks kind of good. I'm like, you want to try it? And they'd be like, sure. And so I'd let them have a bite or so to try. Wow. And you do something kind of unusual with the plan mm-hmm. too, because you learn that through your own and, and you can go ahead and talk about that. Yeah, I do. I, so 
sometimes I find I would find myself getting home and I would be, as my kindergartner calls it, starving for my life. <laughs> is what he says is when he's hungry, he's very dramatic. And so I'd get home and I'd be like, I am so hungry. And I'd be like really tempted just to eat something so that I could make it to dinner time. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't just necessarily be like, I think I'm hungry. It's like, there's a bear in my tummy trying to get out hungry. And so what I would do is I would save my fruit from lunchtime and I would have it between lunch and dinner. And like a lot of people would say, oh, that's snacking, but it was planned, like very, very much planned thing for me because I knew like if I didn't eat it on my drive home, then I would be getting into all kinds of things in the kitchen that I didn't need to be getting into. So that's what I chose to do. And then just recently I saw that there's actually an option for that on bright line that, that they have. And, um, it has like a fourth meal plan. And uh, I was like, Hey, look at that. That's something that I, I kind of do. So yeah, I don't I took do a look at that plan too. And it said, it's also very helpful for those who may have had bariatric yeah. surgery or someone, or, you know, if you have to eat smaller meals. Mm -hmm. So there's that option. I didn't know that existed until we I talked know. the other day. Yeah. And, but I think it's really fits the bill for teachers. <laughs> I think so too, because, you know, you're going so, so much. And a lot of times you have that, that drive home or even, you know, for people that are like nurses that are mm -hmm. working such long shifts, like being able to kind of maybe just very purposefully saving something to eat then might help in the long run. And for me, the, just the fruit always worked because I don't always need it at lunchtime. Like I, the lunch is filling. And so I would be fine with just the vegetables and my protein and fat. And then I would save the fruit for later. And it was just enough that just made me through. So I wasn't starving for my life. <laughs> Margaret says here in the chat, and this is helpful for when you don't have enough time to eat. And right. yours is definitely one of those. When I was in retail, that was one of those too. But yeah. that's when I gained all my weight because I thought I knew better and that I'd be able to just maybe go and get food. Like I never yeah. packed anything. No. Yeah. What does this, what is this life like? What is this compared to like your prior life as far as, you know, did you meal plan and did you bring breakfast, lunch and just different kinds or just, is it a yeah. total change? No, it's not really a total change. I always used to meal plan just because I'm that type of personality that I like organization. And it always helped me when I went grocery shopping to have a, a plan ahead of time. So I didn't, you know, just throw things I didn't really need in the cart, even though they still got in there. Um, and they still do because I have small children. But um, they, I just found that um, it was just, easier, you know, like there wasn't as much food that was wasted and there wasn't, um, I don't know, like it's just, it kind of, it was the same of what I had been doing, but in just a better way, yeah. you know, like a healthier way of doing it. Cause I would bring lunches with me and I would bring breakfast with me sometimes, but they weren't the best choices. And then being a teacher, there's always, always food in the teacher's lounge that is not any of our business to be eating. And so like just walking through the teacher's lounge, you know, you could pick up three or four things that are available. And so a lot of times like that's what would happen or a coworker would be like, let's go have this or let's pick up this. And I'd be like, sure. You know, even if I brought a lunch, I'd be like, oh yeah, bring me back something or, you know, right. you know how it is. <laughs> and I have a question here. Like, did you stress about your water intake? Is that a struggle at all? As did a teacher? Mm-hmm. The, there are definitely days um, that I did because I was going like there were days where I forgot to eat, like honestly, just because it was so, so busy and the nature of our students could be uh, kind of volatile. And so just situations that happen, I, I might be too busy to, to get to my meal or there were times where I, I put it in the um, microwave. And then like three hours later, I found it in there. And I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> hey, <laughs> there wow. it went. And, and you brought, um, yeah, you brought up but, something there volatile. Yeah. And um, I know that that is a very demanding profession mm -hmm. 
So how do you handle that emotion wise? Like, do you, do you have a practice or anything or do you just set boundaries or around your time or? I do have to set boundaries. I have to be really careful um, of not bringing things home. And that was ultimately this year. um, It was one of the reasons why I chose to go into a different position than the one that I was at. Because through a series of events, um, my coworker and my um, teacher's aide that were in the classroom both left. And they were for good reasons, but I was left by myself in the classroom. um, And the students at times were physically aggressive um, and definitely verbally aggressive and things like that. And I just kind of found myself learning what my boundaries were and what I could handle and what I couldn't handle. And, um, you know, there were some nights I would go get home and my husband would look at me and I just burst into tears because it was such an emotional day. And so I kind of learned um, that I have to be okay with doing what I did. Like, I have to be okay. Like, this is the best I did. And I have to be okay with that. And I have to come home and still have more left over for my kids. So I've learned to be really protective of what I say yes to. And my time spent, you know, writing IEPs and things like that. Like, I cut off time for certain things and I'll pick it back up. And that's just what I've chosen to do to kind of um, – save my own mental health, you know, because you have to, you have to have self-care for sure. As a, as an educator, um, one of the things that I learned when I, um, had my concussion very shortly after that, I gave a talk to, um, all of the, the sped, um, workers in the district about, um, self-care and compassion fatigue that teachers feel. And, it's kind of like secondary traumas that we might have because of working with students who have trauma. And so um, that's just one of the things that I've learned is just to be really aware of like what I'm feeling and why I might be tempted to go and eat NMF because of what I'm feeling and not medicate myself with food anymore that way. Um, Just to look at food really as like, food is medicine and it's not meant to medicate emotions. You know, it's, it's meant for your health, for your body, and you have to deal with those emotions in other appropriate ways. And so that leads to the question that was just asked too. What do you do specifically for self-care? So I love going on walks for me. I live out in the desert. Um, in the, in the summertime, it's not so fun going for a walk when it's over a hundred degrees outside, but when it's optimal weather, I love going for a walk. Cause that's kind of my time, um, where I can think through things and I can decompress and it kind of just kind of melts my stress away. I also in the summertime swim mm-hmm. and, um, that swimming time is where like people say they talk about runners high, you know, where you kind of get those endorphins going. And that's what I get from swimming. Um, and just being able to kind of decompress and take some time to move my body around a lot. Yeah, that, that would be um, really important. Now, I, I want to talk about something that we chatted about. Um, it's not been a straight shot down. I mean, no. <laughs> it was in the beginning, right? I mean, it was in the beginning. Yeah. And for a very long time, it was, um, you know, pretty smooth sailing. And then I, I hit some roadblocks and I, you know, fell off the, the train a little bit. And um, I've been kind of clawing my way back from there. Because um, at one point I had been down like 90, almost 90 pounds. And I'm kind of up and down for the last, I'd say maybe since like March of this year, I've been up and down and up and down and up and down. And I think I've gained and and lost like the same amount of weight, maybe 10 times over, I'm sure. But, um, you know, it's one of those things that I know it works. I know this way of eating and I know this way of living works. And I feel so much better when I am on it consistently that I, I just get drawn back to it over and over and over because my body like loves eating this way. And, um, you know, I, I know that if I just stick to it, eventually, you know, it's going to stick and I have more support this time around. I, I did go for the all access and I actually have 
a mastermind group now, and I'm super excited. A couple of them are here in our chat with us. That's awesome. And it's been um, just really good being able to check in with people because I didn't really have that that support the first time around. Like I, I would go um, onto Brightline eating web pages and stuff, and I would post things, but I didn't have somebody who was consistently like, "Hey, were you bright? How was your day?" Sort of thing. And so now um, I have that, and I'm excited. You know, this kind of this time around, I've been bright for four days. And counting, you know, you know, Thanksgiving was a little rough, but I feel well, good. This is, you know, this is perfect timing to talk yeah. about this because one thing that you said that when we were chatting was, you know, I've learned to just give myself grace. And how yeah. important is that? Yeah. Like just give yourself <clears throat> grace. And yeah, like we're living in really hard times. And I think everybody is dealing with a lot of emotions and we're inundated all the time with things on social media and, you know, the news and things like that. And um, it's, it's rough for everybody. So that's one of the things that, especially with my change in jobs and like learning new things in my jobs now too, that, um, you know, I'm just learning to give myself grace, especially when I do stumble. I'm like, you know what? This is a learning opportunity. What are we going to learn from this? What can I take from what happened and make it better and move on, you know? You know, I was saying the other day that when um, I talked with Emily Myers and, and she, she does a lot of um, podcasts and things like that, mm -hmm. she said something that really struck me. She said something like, we don't regain the same weight. We're gaining mm -hmm. new weight when mm -hmm. that happens. And that weight is with those circumstances at that time. That made so much sense to me because yeah. when you think about it, like I've been bright for a long time. And then over Thanksgiving, there were three days that mm -hmm. I started out great. And then right. something happened later on in the day. Some of yeah. it was just like, hey, mom, want to try that? Right. You know? And not intending in each day to do that. But I wasn't like mad at myself. It was right. that day. That's what happened. And yeah. I think it's when I when I got started, my friend Lori told me some really good advice. She said, Noreen, if you should fall off plan, you know, or get in a ditch. Yeah. Two things. One, don't beat yourself up. Yeah. And two, don't look back. You're not going that way. Yeah. And so, you know, when we chatted and you said, you know, I just give myself grace yeah. over and over and over again, if we can give ourselves grace and then just, you know, do the next right thing, whatever yeah. that is. Um, and, you know, when I went through mine the last few days, on day three, after the third day, I all of a sudden had an epiphany. Am I going to have to get bigger clothes? <laughs> right like, what <laughs> like like if I keep this up where is this going you know yeah I told my husband I'm like it's all fun and games until your clothes don't fit right and then it becomes a big problem because then what are you gonna do right so how did you pull yourself out like you know was there just a stopping point or did you just you know start getting stronger yourself I mean because if you were going 10 pounds up and down, now yeah. you've, you've got a little bit longer term thing. Right. What are you doing in your practices? Just the nightly being sure of the nighttime, getting everything ready? Yeah, I found myself like when I was kind of like up and down all around, I wasn't very um, clear with my lines. Um, and I might go over on one of them, or I might not set everything up how it's supposed to be the next morning. And then I would find myself being like, oh, forget it. You know, I'll just eat whatever's in there. And like that very quickly became a problem. And so for me, um, with my buddy, um, Monique, we decided, okay, like this has been going on for us for a while. Monday, we're all going to start together and we're going to check in with each other together. And I meal prepped and started it. And it was kind of more of like a restart of what worked for me before. Mm 
And so like, I know what works for me and I know that I can be successful doing X, Y, Z. I just have to do it. And so I think like having that pl a plan in place of what I was going to do and, you know, how I was going to do it really helped. And for, and I'll just throw this out for me. I have found public accountability is like, yeah. whoa. So yeah. you're using that in your group. Yeah. And the starting out, right, I've actually been using a sheet, which mm -hmm. I'll just be right open. After I said, hey, let's have a 100-day challenge, that night I'm like, what did I just <laughs> do? <laughs> yeah. That is going to kill me. Yeah, mine is the last, like the last 100 days of the year. And I was looking at it the other day and I'm like, that's not a very pretty chart. <laughs> like oh, it has yeah. scribbles for the days that, you know, I, I'm all right. And then a little star for the days that I'm bright. And I was like, hmm, I think we could do better than that. Let's try. Well, somebody mentioned to me about putting a heart. And so yeah. that's what I've been doing. And I'm telling myself, even though I might not be bright that day or maybe not, that night or whatever yeah. I still love myself yeah so that's where the heart is and that's been and it's yeah. also being transparent mm -hmm. having some integrity and I don't right. want to put the heart there I yeah. don't <laughs> yeah that's how I am too like I don't want to scribble it in no, like but I, I want to be honest with myself and you know do you weigh yourself every day not well um I do actually I do weigh myself every day and that's one of the things that um, I've been learning is to not let the scale like freak me out, you know, as it can, um, but just kind of take it more as like data. Like this is, this is the data from my body and what am I going to do with this data that I have and just observe like the monthly flow of things and, and how my body changes throughout the month and kind of take that into account for things. Cause I really, I have that like, you know, psychology, science nerd mind. And I like looking at the data. And so um, for me, I do it every day, but I only count my Saturday weigh-ins. Oh. So when I keep track of my weight, I only count it on Saturdays because it's still a week long um, in between. And I might go up and down during the week, but when I'm on plan from Saturday to Saturday, it, you know, it pretty consistently goes down. So those fluctuations that happen during the week, I don't really have to worry about. And I think that helps me to like, not be so dependent on what the scale says. Well, and even with the daily, I learned that for every carb that you eat, it's four times its weight in water. Yeah. So those three days, I was up like almost five pounds. But I yeah. knew I did not eat 17,500 calories. Mm -hmm. extra. I knew that. So, yeah. but my old Maureen would have been freaking out and like, well, what's the use? Right. You know, before yeah. I forget, we talked about one thing that I knew that we really both enjoyed learning about, and that was splitting proteins. Yeah. Who knew? <laughs> Can you talk <laughs> about that just a little bit for someone who's new? Yeah, when I that is about when I first started, it said four ounces of protein or you know, whatever serving size it is, you know, for the protein that you choose. And um, I didn't know that there was a possibility of splitting up the proteins so I could have uh, you know, half of this and half of that and kind of play with those fractions, if you want to call it. And then I saw someone mention something on Instagram and I was like, wait. I want to try that. Like that looks interesting. And so that's what I do. And so a lot of times now I'll split proteins. Um, or sometimes I'll even split fats if it's just a little bit of this and that, that I want to use. And um, it just makes life more fun. I think when you can do that and you have so many more um, combinations of foods that you can eat. Cause I love cooking and I love trying like new foods and new things. And I frequently make my own spices like spice blends of things. And so I'll try things out. And so now I, um, you know, I have my favorites that I'll go to, but yeah, I never knew that you could do that. And also one of the things I didn't know in the very beginning was that you could take your vegetables and split them 10 and 10 for, for lunch and dinner. So for me, like eating all that salad at dinner time, I was like, Oh my gosh, I feel like a rabbit. I'm never going to get through this. Right. And uh, then I realized, Oh, Hey, like 
people are saying that you can do this. And I read on the official Facebook page, like, yes, that's allowed. And I was like, cool. So I went to try that. And it was way easier for my body that way. And so when I, when you talk about splitting the vegetables, I did that too for about a year, 10 and 10. Yeah. Instead of six and 14. Right. Six at lunch, 14 at dinner. And that was not quite right either. And so I changed it to eight and 12. Mm -hmm. And that's just right for me. But I will say that it took me like a couple of weeks for my head to say it was okay. Right. And I think that's a preview of what maybe getting in maintenance and adding or changing something is, or I maybe would. even like what you experienced with saving your fruit for not a snack, but a planned meal Yeah. after you got home or on the way home. Right. And that's just something to be thinking about. Yeah, I, I had looked at the maintenance plan not long ago and kind of freaked me out a little bit. The thought of just adding more food on when I was like, but I'm good. Like, I, I know this food plan. I can do this food plan in my sleep. But just the thought of like adding some more things and kind of playing with it and how things might change. I was like, oh, that kind of made me a little a little nervous about it. But um, you know, I don't know at what point I'll get to my bright body. I'm still working on it. And uh, we'll see, but yeah, well, that protein, the, there's a list that if you go and you're watching this on YouTube, it's in the slideshow. So that is printed out there. And also that four meal plan is on that slideshow. So that's a handy reference for you. But yeah. anyway, you know, as we, we get going here and um, you, you talk about the changes that you make yourself, you like to walk, mm -hmm. but you said you also like to hike. I now, do. What were you able to hike before? And so, are you doing more exercise on a daily basis or what are you doing? I was able to hike before, but I'd be like, I'm going to die. <laughs> like walking back up that hill, I'm pretty sure I'm going to need like 50 hundred breaks, you know, in between. And the students would be like, come on, Miss Mullins, you're so slow. And I'm oh, like, with I'm your slow. students. Holy yeah. cow. Yeah, I would hike with my students too. Because um, we had <clears throat> a population of kids that just need to move their bodies a lot. So that was one of the things that we would do like once a week as we'd go on hikes. And so I would do them, but then I'd be like wiped out for the rest of the day. And so now um, I actually, we go on hikes as a family and my littles go with us and we'll do like three or four mile hikes up and down. And, you know, I have a lot more energy at the end and, you know, I can keep up with everybody and it's, it's way more fun that way, let me say, <laughs> than well, wondering, like, am I going to make it? It's just absolutely incredible. You know, as you, as you have gone through this journey, what have been the non-scale victories for you? I'm hoping that your panic attacks have lessened. They have, actually. That was one of the things that when I, um, you know, kind of a, I was saying that I have like a science mind. Um, one of the things that I was researching is that sugar has a really high um, stress level. Like if you have, if you have anxiety, <clears throat> sugar can really affect your amount of anxiety and your panic attacks. And I didn't know that. And so after I started eating this way, I found that my body and just the inflammation when it came down, like my panic attacks were cut in like half. And for me, I was like, whoa, this is way more manageable than what they were. Cause I didn't, I didn't want to get on medication and have to like medicate myself daily for things, which was kind of that next step that I had been talking about with my doctor. And, um, I wanted to avoid that at all costs. Sure, I was just saying, um, that one of those non-scale victories was the reduction in the, um, the frequency of panic attacks that I was feeling. And then just, you know, being able to keep up with my kids, you know, I have two little boys who are very active and constantly running around and I want to be able to keep up with them long-term as long as I can. And then I was thinking about it because you had asked me what some of my non-scale victories were. And um, not too long ago, I tried on my wedding dress and it's like so big on me oh, because I'm smaller now than I I like, I honestly do not remember the last time I was the size, maybe junior high. Wow. Like, 
was the last time I was the size that I am. And so I tried it on and I was like, oh my gosh, I've got so much room. And, you know, so that was kind of cool. And for a long time, my wedding ring didn't fit and now it's too big and I have to have it resized because it will fly off my fingers um, if I like wash the dishes or something. So, but I think overall, like just, I can do things, you know, like I can go to the beach and I'm comfortable and I'm not worried about like, oh my gosh, what do I look like in my bathing suit? I'm, I'm just, I'm pretty comfortable and um, I can go on airplanes and I don't have to like worry about fitting in seats. And my husband and I went horseback riding on our last vacation and I didn't have to worry about the poor horse being able to support me. (laughs) So it's just all those things that, you know, I don't really have to think about anymore and I can just live and, you know, have fun doing things. Fantastic. And I'm glad that the health benefits have been there for you too, especially, you know, and, um, you know, as we go through this, you know, do you see that it's sustainable for you? Oh yeah, I definitely think it is. It's, that's one of the biggest things when I started Brightline Eating and my husband was like, oh my gosh, another diet you're going to try. And his whole thing was, not that he thought I was going to fail. He just hated how I felt when I felt like I failed and he didn't want that for me. You know, he wanted me to, you know, have pride in succeeding and things like that. And, um, so when, after a while, after I had done that, I told him, I was like, I can do this. Like, this is like a long-term thing and I don't feel deprived and I don't feel hungry all the time. Like I do, did with other, you know, diets. And it was one of those things that I was like, this really is a lifestyle change. And it's not just one of those things that I'm going to do for a little while because my body likes it. Like when I eat not my food now, like my body's like, oh no, you, you just messed up. Like I'll get all gross feeling and then bloated and just really quickly. My body's like, we don't eat that way anymore. Like, come on, get on board with this. We're on board. You need to get your brain on board too. Yeah, it's really true. I mean, it's, it's quite startling. So for somebody new, that seems like this is impossible. Yeah. It seems impossible to go back the other way to me. I mean, as far as how you feel, if you just step off for a little bit, right. You don't realize, I don't know what kind of detox you went through, but you don't realize what every cell is hanging on to with the garbage of sugar and flour. It's really startling. It's startling. And I'm imagining now, do you bake for the boys? Like, I do. Yeah. Um, I like, I mean, do you bake like no sugar, no flour recipes or? Yeah. Sometimes I do. And sometimes <laughs> it's funny. Like I'll bake things. They'll be like, that smells really good. Can we try it? And they'll try it and they'll be like, huh? Like the texture might be off for them or not what they were expecting because it smells so good and they'll try it. And so I'll bake things um, for them and I might, um, you know, switch out sugars for them um that might that has like you know applesauce or something more natural Mm -hmm. we kind of go that direction because i don't limit what they have um well i do but as far as like not allowing them to have food like that in the house like my husband still eats you know things that i choose not to eat all the time and the boys do too so i kind of have to you know have horse blinders on and stick to my own plate and not really look at other things a lot of the time all as you go through the whole experience of work yeah. and home and anywhere yeah. you go, you know, mm-hmm. trips, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So as, as we get here at the end, you know, there's going to be somebody listening to this and maybe they are right now here, like mm-hmm. but they haven't started this yet. Right. You know, they may be in the same boat that you were like, maybe tried all the things. Yeah. I'm um, now health and health issue has come up. What would you say to them, Rachel? You know, I'd say like, if you only try one more thing, like this should be it. Like if if you're, I was at the point where I was like, I'm just meant to be fat. I'm just going to accept myself as I am. And I'm, this is, you know, this is just how I am. And I was like, okay, fine. I have one more try in me. I'll try it one more time. So I would suggest for them, like if, if you only have one more try or one more thing to do, like try this, because this, you know, is 
revolutionary to what diet culture is like, you know, it's about healing your brain and more focusing on, um, you know, the healing of your body and not necessarily like getting thin as quick as you can in unhealthy ways. So I think anybody that would be interested should just, just try. And like me, like maybe it's baby steps. Maybe you just try cutting out some things first, or maybe you try portioning first and, and then you'll realize, Hey, this is doable and jump in with both feet. Like I did, but you know, it's, it's definitely doable. Even if you don't sign up for things or you don't, you know, have like me, I didn't read the book. I just had a little PDF and I had a piece of paper and I was like, okay, let's do this with my little piece of paper. And, you know, there's, um, it's, it's very simple you know, and anybody can do it really. It's really amazing. I tell you about my friend Lori, but she did the same thing. Yeah. She got a piece of paper. Yeah. I think she bought the book, but she just kept, you know, did the piece of paper. Right. And it worked so well. She didn't, yeah. she didn't have to go on. So it's like just kind of interesting that you could do that. But yeah. now you're at another level. You're coming mm -hmm. in with new eyes. Right. Whether you want to call it resuming or whatever, but you're coming in with new eyes and a lot of experience. Right. And seeing what's worked, you know, you know, doing your research so that this is what works for me in my work. Yeah. You know, I have to meal prep. I have to do these things to be successful. Yeah. You know, get out and walk or hike or, you know, whatever. So I can be, you know, the person I need to be. You yeah. Know? And, you know, we learn these things and, you know, it's just really great. I, I just so appreciate that you would, you know, but Deb saying it's the solace in the science. It's, yeah. That is so helpful to know that there is the code that works. It really does. And yeah. And it's something that's reliable and you don't have to, you know, have all these fancy things to do it. It's just food, you know, and it's just the combination of food that you put together and, um, you know, the quantities and that sort of thing. Like it's not crazy counting calories or macros or things like that. It's just, listening to your body and how it responds to the food you eat and, you know, going from there. Well, and using like the protein <clears throat> splits and fat splits, yeah. you make it really unique for you personally. Right. And, you know, like, I know that you're allergic to something. To I, yeah. And so I'm allergic to cinnamon and, and tree nuts. And so you, you use something beyond nuts for a nutty flavor, right? The sun Yeah, I use sun butter, which is sunflower seeds. And so <laughs> I actually, um, I buy sun, sun butter in bulk from the company and they send it to my house in like this giant tub. And I'm always so happy when it comes because, you know, I use it a lot um, for things. And that's one of the, like the breakfast that really fills me up. So I know if I'm going to be really busy, on certain days, like I'll choose to have that in my breakfast and it helps a whole lot for other people. It might be, you know, peanut butter or some other nut butter, but. And you can make little... with it, right? Yeah. 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 You can, anything you can do with normal peanut butter, you can do with sun butter and it's just the better version. So you don't have reactions, you know? Yeah. I'll have to keep that in mind. I have a family member who's allergic to nut tree nuts. Yeah. So, you know, as, as we close up, any last words at all? I feel like I've talked a lot and I'm used <laughs> to that as a teacher. Like I'm used to talking a lot, but um, I don't know. I don't think so. I just, I'm excited that I got to come on and, and talk with people and I don't, I don't feel like I'm an expert or I know everything. I'm still learning and trying new things as I go. And obviously like pulling myself out of the ditch with everybody else sometimes and I think that's the beauty of it is that as a community, like <clears throat> we can come together and just learn from each other. And I think that's really beautiful. It really is. And, you know, I appreciate so much. I appreciate everybody here who has taken the time, you know, it's individuals sharing their stories that makes this like doable, but also fun. Yeah. I mean, we all, we all got here somehow, some way. And it's some, 
you know, some have said, you know, it's like hand in hand leading each other home. I just like to think like we're living in peace. Yeah. And hopefully living our best life. And as different as we all are, you know, there are always things that, you know, we can relate to with one another, you know, especially when it comes to, to eating a certain way or, you know, to learning curves and things like that. Like there's way more if you open up and allow yourself um, to be a little bit vulnerable. Sometimes it's hard, but like, if you do that, you find like, they're a lot more like me than I know, you know, and like, we're a lot more like each other than we know. And everybody's struggling and you never know when you could help someone or they could help you. And, you know, well, I know you've helped many tonight. So thank you again, Rachel. Thank you, everyone. And I'm going to close as I do each week. Good night. Stay bright. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Good night, everybody. (laughs) Good night. So, Rachel, how would you like to play Three Question Thursday? (laughs) I would love to. Okay, Three Question Thursday. And I have to ask you, you said you like putting spices together. Mm -hmm. Is there any combo that you favor? And you also said you're allergic to cinnamon. I am. So, so I was wondering what you do. So, um, for example, um, I really like pumpkin pie spice, but I can't eat it. So I make my own with just slightly different combinations um, of spices. So I'll use like ginger and nutmeg and um, allspice. Um, and then sometimes a little bit of clove and that combination kind of gives me the feeling of cinnamon because I haven't always been allergic. I can thank my children for that after my pregnancies is when I started becoming allergic to tree nuts. And so, um, before that cinnamon would kind of, um, every once in a while I'd have an issue with it. And then afterwards, when I was becoming allergic to tree nuts is when I pretty consistently would have reactions when I would eat them. And so it kind of the making my own spices was the mother of necessity because a lot of, um, spice flavors that I like, like, um, middle Eastern spices and things like that have cinnamon in them. So I make like my own version of like garam masala and things like that. And I have to, um, just make sure I take the cinnamon out of it. And so I still get the, the hint of the flavor, but it doesn't have, you know, the things I can't have in there. Oh, that is really interesting. Um, and I know that you have a special meal that your husband and you like. I, we do. We have our breakfast. That? We have Saturday morning breakfast is what it's called. And my husband actually, when I first told him about it, was like, uh, I don't know. But now it's his favorite. Like if we don't have it, he's like, wait, where's our Saturday morning breakfast? And he'll be all sad. But so what it is, is because um, potatoes are compliant, you know, so we take two, um, oh my gosh, my mind's blanking out, hash browns, two hash brown patties, and we make them as like sandwich bread. And so we'll take an egg and cook it however we want. Um, and then we'll put an egg and a slice of cheese um, in between the two hash brown patties. And that's like our morning breakfast, um, like not my food. And so that's one of what's one of the things that like, I don't know, we just kind of like it. It's our routine now. Like, and if we don't have it, my husband like misses it. And he's like, when we had guests here for Thanksgiving, he's like, but wait, it's Saturday. And I was like, well, does everybody want this? And they're like, yeah, that sounds good. And so I made it for everybody. And the whole household had a BLE breakfast with us in the morning. And so so you eat it like a sandwich. Yeah. You just pick it up like a sandwich and eat it because the hash brown patties are, and we get the pre-cooked kind just because I'm way too tired in the mornings to make my own <laughs> because as my kids say, mom sleeps really good. That's one of her superpowers. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it is. So I like fast and easy things. So we would do those in the air fryer is what we use, or you can do them in the oven or whatever. And you just use them as your, like, you know, for lack of better term, your, your bread. That's, so. those are, that's going to be great. Um, it's good. And then you just have fruit on the side and whatever fruit you want. And it's just a fun kind of tradition that we started and it's really good. You know, and, and it doesn't have to be not my food or sweets or, yeah. or whatever. Tradition yeah. is tradition. Right. One more question. Question mm-hmm. number three, for all the marbles, all the money, 
Um, (laughs) What would you say to the Rachel of that day when you got started? That's a good question. Um, You're stronger than you know. I would tell her you're stronger than you know. Just thinking back over all of the things that have happened uh, just this year alone, not including COVID and everything else. Um, you know, you're stronger than you know. Like I was sharing with you, my whole family um, caught COVID a couple of weeks ago and we were all sick and um, I couldn't taste anything. And so I just decided to eat whatever. And I very quickly realized like I wasn't eating enough protein and my body kind of like freaked out about it. Mm. And, um, it really became one of those things of when I was sick, like measuring and weighing my foods, even though I couldn't taste them, you know, it was kind of like my saving grace and it allowed me to be strong and to get healthy. I think, I think faster so that I could help my other family members who were a lot sicker than I was. And so, and I'm thinking like, as you're saying this, that you said you had all this meal prep and you showed me a picture of the freezer. Yeah. That had to help too. It did. Yeah, it did help. And uh, (laughs) I grossed, it's kind of funny. I grossed my husband out because I couldn't taste anything. And so at that point I was like, I have all the little pieces of leftover things that I saved in containers in my refrigerator. So I just put them all together in one meal to eat them. Cause I couldn't taste them. And they all were like the amounts that I needed. And he was like, that's gross. That and I was like, hilarious. I was like, but it's food and it makes me feel good. Even if I can't taste it. I'm like, and because I can't taste it, I'm eating them all together. That is oh. just so <laughs> funny, but it's so true. It's the hodgepodge of peace in your yeah. brain and it works yeah. and you know how to split your protein. So, you know, right? you got yeah. the numbers right. All those little pieces add up together. And I think that just really helped me, especially during that time, because my dad and my sister were really sick, like really sick. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I was the one that was well enough, even though I wasn't a hundred percent better myself, but I was well enough to shuttle them to and from emergency rooms oh, wow. and go and get, you know, when I was better, go and get medicine and stuff for them. So, um, you know, I think that's one of the things like you're stronger than, you know, is, is something that I would tell myself, like I had to deal with a lot, like healing my brain from the concussion and, dealing with stuff at work that I would have never thought in a million years I'd have to do by myself. And, you know, and dealing with technology and everything that you had to do with COVID and learning how to zoom and everything. And it was, it was wild, you know, it's been a wild couple of years. Wow. Rachel, you're amazing. And thank you so much for coming on starting out bright. Of course. And thank you for playing Three Question Thursday. It's yeah. a delight. <laughs> and I hope that we'll stay in touch. So of good course. night, everybody. Stay bright. Good night.